Welcome to another edition of Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. My name is Chris Meyer, and I'm here with Haley Westrich. Haley, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. We got a great entertainer with us today, too. We do. We do. Carrie Garrison. And she Super has excited. got a new show in town. Yes. That she's going to be starting soon. Yeah. So I'm anxious to hear a Very lot about excited. that. Very excited, yeah. So it's about spring break time. That it is. Time to start planning. And so people are planning spring break. Where should they go on spring break? Uh, Branson, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And and so, you know, spring break, I, I did a little research and I said, how did spring break start? Like, where did that like come from? And there... Or, or has it always been a spring break? You know, because schools let out and right. colleges and like, how did that happen? And I found this on the internet. Whether it's true or not, I <laughs> do not know. But I, it was a lot of it was on a lot of sources. And so there were in 1936, there was this guy from Colgate University. His name was Sam Ingram, and he brought his swimming team down to Fort Lauderdale to train at this pool called the Casino Pool. Hmm. And then. In 1938, the town got the idea of, hey, there might be an opportunity here. So they hosted the first college coaches swim forum. And now there was more kids coming. And so by 1938, there was 300 swimmers. And then it just kept growing and growing. And in the spring break of 1959, Time Magazine had an article titled Beer in the Beach. <laughs> And it said, it's not that we drink so much, noted one attendee, it's that we drink all the time. And so you, two years later, there was a spring break movie called Where the Boys Are. And they said spring break after that just kind of exploded. And so you had in that, and then you had MTV mm -hmm. doing spring break. And, and basically you show all these bad things that are happening on spring break. And that's what makes Branson the good alternative. Exactly. And because families can come here College students can come here. People can come here just to have a good time, not to see how much they can drink. Yeah. Um, and so it's actually become a pretty busy time in the middle of March for Branson. It has, and there's so much to do. So Branson's a br great place to come if you're thinking about going somewhere on spring break. It's family friendly. You don't have to worry about all the craziness that goes on. And so Silver Dollar City's open. There's lots of shows. There's lots of attractions. It's just a great place to come on spring break. And so folks, if you're thinking about it, uh, pick up the phone, call the folks at ibranson.com. That's 877-ENTERTAIN. We'll be back in just a moment. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need ibranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at ibranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782 ibranson.com welcome back folks to play branson i couldn't talk there for just a second but you know we don't do any editing here so we're just going to keep going um and i am here today with carrie garrison carrie it's good Hi. to have you good to be here thank you so, so much appreciate it so you have been a performer in branson really for quite a long time i have i have been here since 2001 so that's a long time yeah. but talk to people because we always like to know the history Okay. of how you got here. So talk to us a little bit about that. I would love to talk about that. It's probably my favorite thing to talk about because uh, I grew up with a musical family. My dad uh, plays bluegrass and gospel music. So uh, sitting in the living room every weekend with the guys picking and uh, my aunts and uncles sang too. So um, God, just what an amazing childhood. I feel so blessed. Mm. Um, and what's amazing, my dad is 72, still picks to this day in his living room with his wow, buddies, wow. all bluegrass and bluegrass gospel music, um, which is so exciting that I'm going get to get to get back to my roots this year and do the things that I did as a little girl. Um, I grew up in Denison, Texas. Okay. And um, again, with the bluegrass family and my dad picking and singing and singing with him and um from there, I um, my parents worked for the railroad, 
So I moved to St. Louis, Missouri. So I was a little Texas girl, moved to the big city sort of deal. You kind of got a little Texas accent. Me, a yeah, little bit, a little bit. I don't know that you could ever lose that. Yeah. <laughs> and I sure am proud of uh, where I'm from and my family. And uh, so I moved to the big city. And um, after I graduated high school, I fell in love with a musician. <laughs> so I moved to North Carolina and Virginia area. And uh, I taught school. And I taught um, middle school and high school special education. And I also played bluegrass on the weekends and loved every second of that. Um, eventually, I ended up moving back to St. Louis. And uh, my little sister saw an ad in the paper for auditions in Branson. And I was no, no, I'm just going to continue <laughs> teaching school. It was what I felt like I was called to do. And I loved it. And you know, music was a hobby for me. I never wanted to be a big star or be in front of a lot of people. I'm pretty bashful and <laughs> I never would have guessed that I, really I never would have guessed that I, I am I get I'm nervous right now Aww. but uh anyway so her and her friends said I dare you just dare you to go to Branson do this audition okay <laughs> so my sister and I she's seven years younger than I am so her and a couple of her friends we all drove up here in uh the year 2000 and uh, my audition was at Shoji Tabuchi's. Okay. Okay, so I go from bluegrass and blue jeans to Shoji Tabuchi's and 20 something costume changes. Wow. And some dancing and things like that, which no one will so you got the ever job. see me do. I did. You got the job. I sure did. Okay. I got the job that day and packed all my stuff and just moved here. Um, ended up uh, in 2003 i had a beautiful son his name is drew uh he's now in um eighth grade 14 years old straight a student have to talk about your kids right can i yes. talk about my yes, baby you can. You can. <laughs> he's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen no. i mean he is uh <laughs> talented athletic smart so proud of him um i be after shoji's i started working with paul harris and clay cooper and those guys R.P. Harrell, all yes. the guys that are over at Clay's now, a lot of them still there. Um, so after Paul Harris, I left and worked. I got a job for, with Mo Bandy okay. for eight years. Eight years. Yes, he took me on the Grand Ole Opry, which I have to say was the probably the biggest moment, mm. obviously, of my entire career. I know a lot of the folks here in Branson have been on the Grand Ole Opry. There's so much talent here, but for me, you know, all the I was the only girl in the band. Mm. And all the guys had been on the Opry before, and so they just made yeah. it really special for me. Yeah. Um, of course, my parents helped me buy a pretty new outfit and all yeah. that good stuff there's like just, girls like. There's, there's so much history at the Opry. Yeah. And um, this last year, I had the opportunity to do a backstage tour yeah. and actually go walk on the stage, not perform, obviously, but it was just cool. Never yeah, could, in you know. my wildest dreams, did I imagine I would be on, on the Opry stage. Yeah. And with Mo Bandy, what a beautiful, sweet, loving man. Um, still singing his heart out to this day. I just, I love Mo and admire him. And I, um, now what, what I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without, without Mo. Just love him so yeah. much. What did you do in Mo's show then? Were I was, you... I was back up and lead singer. Okay. I did, um, all the Janie Fricky, Mo Bandy duets with him, okay. uh, Cheat and Situation and all those great songs. And, and I did all the harmony vocals with him for about eight years. Um, and then Mo decided to go on the road full time. Mm -hmm. uh, being a mother, I can't live like that. So I actually didn't work in Branson for uh, two or three years, not singing anyway. I did other odd jobs. I've done everything, sold vacuum cleaners and babysat <laughs> and everything else. Sometimes entertainers you have know, to do that. You know, whatever you do, you just have. Yeah. And, and, you know, I just wasn't real sure what to do after Mo left town. Um, and then I got a call from Clay Cooper and couldn't be more excited to be with such a great show. This will be my fourth season uh, in Clay's show. And I love Clay and Tina and all the dancers and mm -hmm. Um, just yeah. so grateful to be a part of their family, the Clay Cooper family. Yeah. You, you know, and it's interesting you said family because mm -hmm. you really get that sense from his show that it's a family show. I mean, like Absolutely. you guys are like family and we've had Clay on, which if you haven't watched that episode, you need to. Um, and we've also had Matt Gum on. He's uh, probably one of those that went so. over time talking 
Clay. He he yeah. likes to talk a little bit. Yeah. Clay <laughs> Clay Clay liked the interview. He said I was one of the best people he's ever, that has ever interviewed him. So I don't well, know that's if he quite a I don't know if he's he was lying. Interviews. I don't know if he was lying or just trying to make me feel good. Maybe or what. he tells them all that. I don't, that, I don't know. I don't know. So. No, he is great. Uh, I do want to go back real quick and tell you um, when I was with Mo on the Grand Ole Opry, the the coolest thing ever. Um, Mo was singing Too Old to Die Young. And on the Opry stage, all you can see is the big screen TV behind you. And the only person on the big screen is Mo Bandy. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of over here in the background. Mo takes his guitar off and puts it on a stand, and he takes the mic off the stand, and he comes over and he sings right next to me. Uh, during the chorus so that I can make it on the big screen. <laughs> I couldn't even sing the rest of the song. Oh, oh too old to die young. I couldn't even do it. Um, oh, that's just the kind of man he is, and I feel mm. the same about Clay and Tina. Um, they are a family. Their kids are around. They allow our kids to come. We even have a babysitter at the theater that watches our children while we're on stage, and mm -hmm. a lot of times the kids get to come out and <laughs> mess around on stage, which is yeah. fun. No, yeah, and your is, son is close to Clay Cooper's son. They two, are right? 11 days apart. Tina Aww. and I were pregnant at the same time. So uh, Clay and my son Drew, or Clay, Colton and my <laughs> son Drew have grown up together. Yeah. So yeah. I, have a, I have a kid in seventh grade. So he's uh -huh. just, because your son's in eighth, right? Yes. And so a lot of times I'm watching the eighth grade boys, mm -hmm. which Clay's son plays on the eighth grade boys basketball team. Yes. And that team He's is a amazing. Great athlete. Yes, yeah. amazing. And Clay is very supportive of his kids and mm -hmm. basketball and all that here in Branson. Oh so. yeah, yeah. We all are. Yeah. We all go. Even the whole band will go. Jimmy Hyde, our drummer, RP. We all go to Colton's ball games. Uh, all support the kids. Love yeah. Branson. Who? Yeah. You know, so go Pirates. Yes. So what else do you like? <laughs> what else do you like to do here in town in your spare time? Oh well, now that I have spare time, it's the <laughs> off season, right? Um, Restaurants, I love the Mexican yes. food restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually just really been enjoying movies and my dog and my son and just kind of being home and enjoying the winter. Absolutely, it's, yeah. But you're, you're you're starting to work on some new projects. I am. And so here in the next segment, we're going to talk about that. So, Great. folks, you need to hang tight because we're going to talk about what's new and coming up for Carrie Garrison in 2018. So stay tuned, we'll be back in just a moment. Try something different this vacation. Bring the whole family to Branson Segway. Segways are the most fun on two wheels since the bicycle. It's safe and fun. Ride at your own pace on our specially designed track. You can oh, do it. I don't know if I can do this, guys. Come on, I don't know. Come on. To get your family from ho-hum to adventure, ride a Segway. Branson Segway and Adventure Center on Highway 165, just one block south of Titanic. Come on, slow folks. Ride like the wind. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. We're here today with Carrie Garrison, who is with the Clay Cooper Theater and also a new show coming. Yes, so Carrie, tell us a little bit about that because I'm super excited. Uh, I am too. I cannot tell you how excited I am. <laughs> I mean, you know, living here 18 years to have my own show for someone to offer me my own show or even want to hear me a whole two hours. It's amazing. <laughs> I feel so blessed. And to do what I am so passionate about, what what I grew up doing as a little girl, doing songs that I sang with my dad, it is actually going to be hard for me. I think it'll be emotional. Um, and we're going to do a lot of great gospel songs, acapella stuff. I know you're going to yes. love it. Um, a lot of songs that you'll know if it's called the show's called bluegrass remedy can i say that Perfect. yes um you know as you know i was voted female vocalist of yes. the year and um just so incredibly honored um and excited that i get to bring some some of my music to this town absolutely um i'm gonna start with um uh, we're going to start with the most traditional bluegrass music from Bill Monroe, the Stanley Brothers, um, Flat and Scruggs, all of that stuff to around the 80s when you had um, Ricky Skaggs and Tony Rice and then um, obviously gospel section and all the way to the new stuff, uh, new grass revival and the new pickers today, Rhonda Vincent, and Allison Krauss. We're going to cover all of those great things. Sounds awesome. And I noticed on Facebook the other day, you posted the band members too. Sounds I like did. an incredible lineup. Yes. So. I'm so proud of the band. Well, you know, like any band, we're family. 
we've all known each other for years. Um, got so, an amazing. So who who are going to be some of the band members? We've then? got um, Kevin Clemens playing Dobro with us. He's over. Um, you may have seen him at Sons of the Pioneers or in the Presley Show over the years. Um, he's an amazing steel guitar player and actually learned Dobro because he loves bluegrass and wanted mm. to be a part of this. Wow. Um, every day he's going home and trying to learn new licks. And so to me, you know, his enthusiasm is, is contagious for me. I just love Kevin and uh, he does a great job. Let's see, Rick McEwen. Uh, he's oh, my he's my been, partner. He's, yeah, he's my been little, around for a while. Yes, he has. He's my sidekick. You know, he came to Branson because of bluegrass music. He moved here with the Dillard family mm. um, that wow. played on the Andy Griffith show. Yeah. The Darlins, <laughs> otherwise known as. Yeah. Um, but he moved here because of the Dillard family, and um, so glad to have Rick, his big personality, um, and he's going to do a lot of the great lead singing and harmony stuff. He does such a good job at that. And let's see, um, we have a new member. His name is Forrest Herzog. He's going to play banjo and mandolin with us. He plays everything. He can play anything that's on our stage. Um, but he'll mostly play banjo and mandolin, and he's got a great tenor voice. He's got that old uh, traditional tenor voice, kind of like Bill Monroe, and mm -hmm. excited to hear him do some great stuff. And then we've got um, uh, Matt Hanshaw on guitar. Sorry, I drew a blank. Now, Matt, didn't he play with Billy Dean? He did. Okay. Yeah. I, that, Billy I Dean's taking a year off, yes. you know, this season. Uh, so I called Matt in a heartbeat. Oh, he's amazing, yeah. amazing guitar player. And, you know, a lot of shows that Matt plays in, he plays uh, lead electric guitar, and he'll be playing some acoustic flat top picking, yeah. which will be great. And these are his roots, too. Yeah. So. so you're doing this new bluegrass show. Are you putting mm -hmm. it all together? I or am. does you So you produce it and everything? Yes. Wow. Yes. From from top to bottom, I think that's what's so exciting about it. And it, it, it does. It makes me so emotional to think about my heart and soul, mm -hmm. you know, and everything I ever dreamt about. You know when you go to shows and you're like, oh, well, if this was my <laughs> show, I'm, I'd probably do this song or do that song. You know, we've all kind of done that. And it, this is my chance. So I'm just overwhelmed and yeah. excited. Well, it, it's... I think it's good that we have new shows that come in and change up. And I think, yeah. you know, today from a bluegrass standpoint, you have the Petersons. Uh, Amazing group. I and, love those those kids. And great they, family. Yeah, they're, they're, they do a great job. And so, you know, if you look at even at Silver Dollar City, they've had the bluegrass, barbecue and bluegrass festival. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I've always said Branson is a very diverse musical scene. Mm -hmm. And this just helps prove that because we're going to have kind of, even though bluegrass is country, it's kind of a different type. It is. And so that's exciting. Yeah, we're going to be all acoustic, you know. Uh, and, you know, you had uh, Brian Duvall on last week or whenever that yeah. was. Y'all yes. had Brian yes. on. I just spoke with him and he's wondering if we had some drums and we don't really have any drums in bluegrass. But if we did, I'd call Brian. <laughs> Those glasses look good. Yes. Yeah, they do. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Um, totally off the subject. But I do want to say we're going to be at Jim Stafford's Theater every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So that's when the shows and it, are. And it starts, it says, March 21st. March 21st is our opening day. And it's called Bluegrass Remedy because um, it, it, coming up with a name is, is not easy, especially around here. You want to be original and you want to think of something new. Uh, but after people would hear, we, we had started a band previously, not called Bluegrass Remedy, but we had done some shows. And as people would leave, they said, I just felt like, I uh, went to church, mm. you know, like I walked out and I just, I just feel better. I feel uplifted and like I just had a dose of medicine. And so we got to thinking about that. And I hope that everybody that leaves our show feels better about themselves or just feels good about the world. Um, you know, there's so many horrible things going on. There's no reason to not go to a show mm. and be uplifted and smile and clap your hands and have a good time. And I hope that's what I, something I can bring I love what you just said because like people sometimes forget that component is that and, and I have this little statement that music matters and it, it can be used for good or it can be used for bad just mm -hmm. like anything sure. but I think I mean I think it's a fair statement that most Branson entertainers want for people to leave to say man I enjoyed that it's it did something positive yeah. to the soul and uh, and so I saw like a little I don't know if it was an ad or artwork that had the bluegrass remedy in it, like 
it I don't know how you would even describe it, but it was it's it an was elixir neat. bottle. Yeah, it was pretty yeah, cool. It is. It's it's an actual old elixir bottle that they used, you know, in the old medicine shows. Mm-hmm. You know, people would travel in their little wagons, the old medicine shows, and have these elixir bottles. It was supposed to make you feel good. And yeah. So maybe come but, see Bluegrass Remedy, and when you leave, you'll feel like yeah, you just had some elixir. Elixir. <laughs> Or went to church. Either way. Either way. Church or <laughs> elixir. Feel great. Um, you, you ought to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> it could be a church experience or a drinking experience. I don't know. It well, would. elixir's not necessarily supposed to be alcoholic. Right, I'm not really right. trying to promote that, really. No, but I, I know, I, yeah. a healing, something healing is healing. What, what the thought is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you if you were performing one other type of music besides bluegrass, what mm-hmm. would it be? It would be, well... I kind of think gospel kind of goes with bluegrass, but um, I love old country. I love Haggard and Jones. That's what I would sing. Yeah. What do you What are you singing over at Clay's? What do you do? I do mostly the gospel stuff, and I this year uh, I did an impersonation of Winona Judd. Oh. So I got yes. to have <laughs> so I had to wear the red <laughs> wig and play the guitar and growl when you sing. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> yep. You know, it's paycheck. If he mm-hmm. says you're going to be Winona, I'm going to go out there and do my best Winona. You can't, you can't argue with Clay too much. You know, in the year before that, I was Adele. Adele. So that you know, that's a big difference. That's big a huge but, difference. So do you know what you're going to be in in 2018? I really don't. I have no idea. He hasn't told me yet. He hasn't told you. I have no okay. idea uh, what I'm going to be singing, but I'm excited. Clay's making so many changes. Clay and Tina. Um, show's going to be a little different this year. I can't Good. give anything away, so you have to come see it. Yep. What Definitely going to be some new cast members. Oh, boy. It's a little bit different this year, but I believe we're starting out on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday nights at 7.30. Perfect. So. Okay, folks, we could probably talk more, but we have to end the sh- this portion of the show. This has been Carrie Garrison, and you're going to be able to see her either at Clay Cooper's theater with clay cooper or her brand new show at the jim stafford theater called bluegrass remedy it opens march 21st and so be be sure to go check it out you can get tickets to any one of those shows at ibranson.com or you can call 1-877-ENTERTAIN and book your entire branson vacation thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned the best western center point in It's Branson's top hotel in the heart of Branson's entertainment, next to the Titanic Museum. Relax in the indoor pool and hot tub. The hotel offers a variety of room types. Enjoy the free hot breakfast every day. For more information or to make reservations, call 1-877-334-1894. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782 ibranson.com hey welcome back to play branson awesome interview yes so i'm very excited i think she's gonna bring a new musical element uh to branson with this bluegrass remedy and so she's just a bundle of joy carrie garrison yes and that was that was a great interview for sure so lots of things happening this year out at silver dollar city we want to talk about One of the biggest being time traveler. I mean, that's going to be insane. (laughs) Huge, huge. $26 million roller coaster. It's got its 10-story, 90-degree vertical drop. It's got a 90-foot tall vertical loop. I I, I see on here they are going to have a new ice cream flavor associated with that. Yeah, and we got to try it. It's delicious. Yes. So um, here's the other thing, and we like to highlight what some of the things are that are coming up out there. And Young Christians Weekend... It's going to be that first weekend, I believe, in April. Double check that. But here's the deal. King and Country is going to be out there on Saturday. Uh, Josh Wilson will be out there Sunday. And then Friday night, there's a new band called Bon Ray, which has been getting a lot of of just, I don't know, uh, accolades or word of mouth or whatever you want to call it. And so that's going to be a huge weekend out at Silver Dollar City. And I think sometimes people don't know 
like all of these bands that come in, but King and Country is huge. First time they've ever played Young Christians Weekend. They'll yeah. be out at Echo Hollow, uh, so people need to check that out. We also have festivals. Tell us about some of the a festivals lot. coming in. Well, we've got the Festival of Wonder starting out in April, so that'll be awesome. Then we go into Bluegrass and Barbecue and the Summer Festival, um, so lots to check out. Yeah, and then you have the Moonlight Madness. We'll have the National Crafts mm-hmm. uh, Festival and Cowboys, and yeah. then Old Time Christmas uh, in November and December. So lots of different festivals going on out at Silver Dollar City. And uh, so we just encourage you to check that out. Uh, while you're there and uh, do you have any plans for spring break at this point not a whole lot no just gonna take it easy and kind of relax I think so so I may go out (laughs) to the east coast I don't know we'll see um maybe planning a trip there to I may go to New York City and I don't know or or (laughs) see what happens there um and folks if you are planning your spring break trip or even your summer trip or fall trip and you're thinking about what should we do um we always encourage our visitors to go to ibranson.com where they can see all the show schedules, the attractions, or call those folks at one eight seven seven entertain That's uh, You can talk to a local Branson person. We will not make you talk to somebody in another country that doesn't know what they're talking about when it comes to our destination here in Branson. So check those folks out. They can help plan your entire trip. And thanks for watching. Uh, Check out our next episode next Thursday. Every Thursday is when we launch our episodes. This has been another edition of Play Branson. We'll see you next time.